everybody, it is me, Lisa Concepcion, certified professional life coach who specializes in helping type A professionals who struggle with their love lives. And today I am talking about love bombing, narcissistic love bombing, how to take the compliments but not take the bait. So we're going to talk a little bit right now. I'm going to dive on in. We're beginning with what is love bombing exactly? What is love bombing? How do you know you're being love bombed? So love bombing is when a person with narcissistic traits or a full-blown narcissist smothers you with attention and affection and compliments and love. And you think that this person was sent from the heavens for you. Why do you think this? Because they tell you this. I'm going to give you some things, some lines that you can identify as love bombing. So if you heard any of these types of things that I'm about to share with you, there is a good chance that you could be being love bombed by someone with narcissistic traits. So let's dive into that. Here's an example. I couldn't help but notice how amazingly beautiful you are. And not only that, but your energy. I can read energy and your energy is unbelievable. Now, nice compliment, right? Take the compliment. Thank you. That's such a sweet thing to say. That's really cool. But then you want to ask questions. What made you, you know, find me? How did you find me? Oh, you found me on social media or you found me on a dating app. Know what kind of questions you're going to ask this person to get a sense of who they are. Are they healthy in the mind? Are they, you know, um, coming at you from a, a, a an authentic place, not predatory, not disingenuous, not uh, looking for supply, narcissistic supply. And I'll get into that in a minute. But you're going to listen for things such as that. You're going to also listen for things as um, it being maybe your third date. And they'll say something like, you're somebody I can fall in love with. Who knows? I'm already falling in love with you. And they're also constantly smothering you with communication. Tons of texts, emojis. Um, little poems, little memes, um, an hour can't go by without some kind of communication. They call you, they're putting you on the phone for three hours. You find that you're, uh, neglecting the things that you want to do because it's like you can't even get off the phone with them. So you are going to go to do the gym or something and you find, oh, I, I, I had every intention of going to the gym, but you know, he, they called me and so I had to be on the phone for three hours and it's this um, bombardment, love bombing of, of compliments and deep communication where they're really trying to get you to reveal very intimate and, and um, deep things about your life. So this is what their strategy is. They love bomb you so that you feel as if this person cares about you so much the connection is so strong right out of the gate that this has to be destiny this has to be higher forces at work here putting us together and they'll even use that language they'll say soulmate somebody starts using the word you're my soulmate you are definitely sent from an angel you know my grandma died a year ago This is exactly what my grandma said on her deathbed, that she didn't want me to be alone, and so she was going to send me someone, and you're that someone. Like, for real, they will go there, and they will bring out the full-on arsenal to make you honestly believe that this person is 100% like, call off all of anything else ever in the world. You are it for them, and they are it for you. And the reason why this is dangerous is because emotionally, it's as if you're given a drug. It's literally messing with the wiring of your mind. A normal relationship is not one where the people are seeing one another and talking to one another all the time, every day, right? The beginnings of a relationship 
has a pattern. It has, it has a process. It has a courtship. Um, maybe you'll see each other twice a week in the beginning, right? I'm talking like the first month, maybe three times per week, if you can swing it, right? And maybe you're speaking on the phone a half hour in the evening, you know, or a quick little chat in the morning to get your day going. But it isn't this every hour on the hour, some form of communication. Now, why do they do this, right? Why love bomb someone? What's the tactic? What's the end game? So again, I mentioned they want to program your mind to get you almost like the Pavlovian dog. When it rings the bell, it gets the food. So it's looking for the bell, right? That's you. You're going to be every hour comes your cell phone, makes a bell, makes a notification. You're literally changing and, tr and, and the process of your mind to expect that text, to expect that, um, that dopamine hit when your phone goes off, when you see it's them, when they're giving you that attention and they are making you the center of their universe. There's a reason why they're doing this. It's the first step in a multi-step process that the narcissist will take his supply or her supply through. And that first step is love bombing. And here's why it is so dangerous. And I'll speak from my own experience especially when you are in a low place of your life. If you're struggling with self-esteem issues, struggling with having good boundaries with people, if your parents were narcissistic, if you are codependent, these are the, the red flags that make you vulnerable to narcissistic predators. So if you struggle with boundaries with the people in your life, right? You're the push around. Everybody pushes you around. You're the giver. You're the empath. You're always there for other people. You may have uh, been neglected emotionally. Any kind of wound that you have, if you are in a bad place in your life, and in my case, I was getting divorced and highly codependent, didn't like to be alone, was absolutely devastated about this divorce. And so I went and, and, got myself in a relationship very quickly with someone who had high narcissistic traits and began love bombing me. And we trauma bonded because he was dismissing his supply of his ex, vilifying her to me, telling me how awful she was and lifting me up, which is exactly what I wanted to hear. When you're going through a divorce or a breakup, and your heart is broken, you want validation that you're worthy, right? It's like, this is horrible. I was just rejected by somebody, but like, here's this person saying how great I am. So I'm gonna hang out with them because I believe I'm a really great kind person and I have a lot going for me. And this person didn't want me anymore and it broke my heart. It made me feel horrible about myself. So I owe it to myself to be with this other person who's gonna love up on me, look at how attentive they are, look how many messages they send me, they must really like me. So this is the story that I was telling at that time, and this is, you know, we're 2020 right now, this is 2015. So there was a huge journey that happened, which is why now I am a certified professional life coach, helping people with this exact thing, because I was there, came out the other side, cured myself of codependency, and I help other people do the same thing. And so with this love bombing thing, I glommed on to these compliments and the presents, the gifts. It was love language, listening intently. What is your love language? And I'm like, I like words of affirmation and gifts. That's my love language. So of course, words of affirmation, if that's my love language and I'm getting my phone blown up, bing, bing, you're so beautiful. It's taking you out this Friday night, ba -ba -da sending over something for you, a special present. Now it's gifts. And it was just this one, two, you know, one, two, one, two programming that was happening um, where it accelerated the intensity of the relationship really, really soon. I was, I was behaving in this relationship with this person as if we were together way longer than we actually were. So if you are in a relationship and it's the early stages of it, and by early stages, I'm saying within the first 60 to 90 days, but 
the intensity of it is more like five years. Like it feels energetically like I feel like I've been with this person for like three years. That is a really important red flag. It's an important thing to look at. In the beginning stages of a relationship, it's all about getting to know one another and learning how to set the pace of a relationship so that you're revealing just enough and they are revealing just enough so that the pace of the relationship is a healthy one. It's not accelerated. It's not doing way too much too soon. Now look, there are rare instances where people do meet and it is on. Like if you watch Candace Owens, I don't know if you're into her, but she and her husband met and they knew, he knew he wanted to spend his life with her, period, end of story, by two weeks in. And he did propose to her. Crazy story, amazing story. But these are two people who, you know, live long distance and they have their careers and they're doing their thing. So they're going to set the pace and like, have a long engagement courtship to get to know each other because and now they're together a year and it's already happening but the point is that does happen it's not to say don't believe in you know that 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 love but there's a way to go about it and if you're not in a in a healthy place with yourself and you haven't healed those wounds from your past and somebody's coming on you hard and heavy and strong Definitely, definitely pump the brakes and really ask yourself, you know, why do I want this right now? Why do I really want this relationship in my life right now? And if it is coming from a place of get what you're getting from it, that should definitely tell you to slow things down massively because you want to come at relationships from the give. You want to be in a situation in your life where you are confident and you can say, you know what, I've been through some stuff in my life and I've healed a lot. I've done a lot of work on myself and a lot of healing and I really love where I am in my life right now. I have great friends. I love where I live. I'm doing well professionally and I want to share this with somebody. I have such a fun life that it's like sad not to share this fun life with somebody else. That's the optimal way to enter a relationship where you're working on you, you're committed to yourself, you're committed to your well-being and your betterment and your own personal development. You're always growing and evolving and changing and you're committed to your well-being and your peace. And then from there, you're out and about living life, doing your thing, and sorry for my phone blowing up, um, and you're in this happy place and somebody comes and bam, you meet them or you're introduced to somebody. So I wanted to come on today because somebody told me that they were a little concerned that they were being love bombed. And they said, I've been seeing this person. Um, we quarantined for 14 days and we talked every day and we saw each other on Zoom and whatever every day. And we quarantined and now it's 14 days and we are going to see each other. And we did and it was amazing and I really like them. And I like them even more in person. And, you know, is this COVID talking? Co you know, we've been quarantining and it's like we're bored and lonely. Or is this the real thing? And I said, my love, how do you feel in your life about you right now? And what is it that you're afraid of? And luckily, this person said, I feel really good in my life. Like I broke up with some dude back in January. After two years, it really wasn't going anywhere. And I didn't, you know, I felt we were better as friends. Um, it was amicable. There was no real big heartbreak. Two years, you know, decent amount of time to be with somebody. But we just like had a lot of love. We ended it amicably. There was no drama in it. We're still cool with each other. And then COVID hit, so I couldn't really like jump into dating again. So I was like, okay, you sound like really healthy, really cool. So then why are you afraid of the love bombing? She said, the boyfriend she had before the last one was narcissistic, sociopathic, disaster, five-year relationship, had to get restraining order, was a whole mess. And this last guy she thought was boring. So I got into the, into the weeds with her with this and I said, is it possible, this is just something to consider, is this possible 
that. You are so used to the volatility of that five-year narcissistic, sociopathic, oh my God, he's going to kill me, this and that, crazy, that anything that is just even keeled and cool is boring to you. And is it possible that this new guy is reminiscent of the ex-crazy narcopath who love-bombed you in the beginning? Because it sounds like what you're describing that happened during COVID and you're on the camera and you're seeing each other on the video camera and you're bonding and you're having food together, ordering the Uber Eats, la la la, all this bonding and ah. Could it be that that is reminding you of the ex before the ex that you kicked to the curb because the guy was, according to you, boring. She was like, okay, how much do you charge because that's spot on and I can't even believe, like, I can't even breathe right now that you're so on point. So I was like, here's the deal. You got to get true with yourself. A lot of times people are still hanging out in past beliefs, past relationships, traumas and dramas that they did not handle and soothe. And so they're blowing off really good people, good healthy people in favor for something that's more familiar and chaotic. So please pay attention to that. That is a common thing that happens. I hear people say that all the time. That guy was boring. This girl was boring. Meanwhile, they were healthy. Don't mistake uh, boredom with good person that can be a stable, solid figure in your life who's going to be loyal and who can build something with. As far as boredom goes, look, we attract what we are. If you're feeling like somebody's boring and you're feeling like you want something a little more high energy, that's fine. Make plans together, you know, be inventive, be creative, go and do stuff together. And I understand that, you know, in the time that we're in now, it's not that easy, but I'm in a relationship, we have a blast. So we can do it, anybody can do it. But the point is, be really, really mindful and careful with this love bombing stuff. Take the compliments. Look, you're a beautiful person. You're kind. Somebody's going to give you a compliment. Thank you. So nice of you. Thank you. But be very armed and very mindful about the intention of where it's coming from and the kind of questions that you need to learn how to ask so that you can keep yourself safe. There are predatory people out there and they're looking for emotional soothing to handle their wounds that they never really looked at. A lot of them are highly narcissistic and they are coming especially now with this COVID, everybody's on social media, everybody's on these dating apps, everybody's looking for connectivity. And some people out there can be very, very dangerous, very harmful with malicious intent. So I hope to help you out. I hope this message helped you and served you well. If you'd like, you can take my free love life assessment. That's over at lovequestcoaching.com. Go over there, click the button, take the assessment, and I will come back with answers to your specific questions that you have for me over there, lovequestcoaching.com. I'm Lisa Concepcion. If Instagram's your jam, you can find me at love, Lisa the Love Coach on Instagram. That's at Lisa the Love Coach. Otherwise, come at you soon. Bye. Much love.